Good afternoon, everyone in Redeemer land and people joining us uh, around the world via the internet. Our afternoon devotion today is based on our epistle reading for this coming Sunday, and that is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 27. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 27. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I want you to picture a spectrum, a spectrum from one side to the other. Put my hands in here, and as far as I can reach them outside of the frame of what you can see. And I want you to think that on the left, there is a spectrum going from bad to worse to the most horrible thing you could possibly imagine. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you go from good to great to the most incredibly awesome thing you could possibly imagine. And then I want you to hear those words again as you're picturing this spectrum. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. On the one side of the spectrum are our present sufferings. Are they bad? Are they worse? We can think of all that's going on with the coronavirus. We can think of all the protests and uh, the violence that has gone on with them. We could think that the death toll could easily rise even further. And if this suffering is bad, you know, it could be worse. And it will get worse. But what we are hearing the Apostle Paul tell us is our mind needs to be on the other end of the spectrum. Our heart needs to be on the other end of the spectrum. We need to be remembering what God promised. The future glory that is to be revealed. The future glory that is to be revealed is so far on the other end of the spectrum from the bad and the worse that we can't even imagine can't even make a comparison because it was so much greater so much incredibly more awesome and and i want you to to have that in mind because you know paul is reminding us that everything in this life is corrupted everything in this life is groaning and you know, we think, how long is this going to last? How long is this going to continue? How long are we going to have to endure this? How long are we going to have to suffer through this? 
No, it's not about to compare with the eternal glory, peace, joy, comfort, and incredibly awesome circumstance that God has prepared for us and that's waiting for us to be revealed yet. And that's what's waiting. Everything in this world is decaying. Everything in this world is groaning. Everything in this world will come to the first fruits uh, of creation. And as we listen to this, but not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. We wait and long for, and I can think of so many people who as they have gotten near the end of their lives, have said, how long? What's he waiting for? Why can't he take me now? Because they know that something so much better is waiting for them. And that's so important for us to remember. As we listen to this, you know, Paul's words in verse 24, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Are we waiting for it with patience? Or is there a lot of impatience? Uh, too many people wait with impatience. But we have hope as Christians. Hope because we have a resurrected Savior. A Savior who conquered sin, death, and the devil and gave us life in its place. And in that hope that of our Savior's promise, I've gone to prepare a place for you, that hope assures us that we'll be with Him. We'll be with Him forever. We'll be with Him in paradise. And so that's what our hope is. That's what our, we long for. We don't see it yet, but we hope for it. We hope for it eagerly and with patience. And so as we have that hope, don't compare it to what we have now. We had now what we have now is an absolute disaster and mess. But we look forward to an absolutely joyful and certain hope hope that will be realized when we're in heaven with Christ in glory, peace, joy, and comfort forevermore. May our hearts, our minds, our faith, the eyes of our souls be focused on the eternal glory that waits for us in Jesus Christ. Hope in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be with us, that our hope may be in you. Our hope uh, above and against everything that we see in this world. So much has been corrupted and so much uh, is groaning, waiting for a redemption to come. And we groan and wait for that redemption to come too. And we know that all things work together for good. Assure us that you are using everything in life to work together for our good. And as we have that assurance, give us the same hope, the hope of what lies before us. It's not worth to comparing to the glory that's coming our way. Strengthen us in that hope and faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings all, and have a blessed day, and we'll see you tomorrow at noon for our last devotion of the week. God's blessings.